Hi, my name is Rachel Seuss, and this is my project, The Effects of Sea Level Rise on Health and Displacement in the Pacific Northwest. Just as an introduction, we're gonna be first discussing why the Pacific Northwest is per particularly vulnerable to sea level rise and what this project entails. So the Pacific Northwest has a very long coastline with the combined coastlines of Washington and Oregon. And they also have a very large population that lives near the coast with many people being indigenous or Native American. Furthermore, the effects of El Nino and La Nina and the Pacific Decadal Oscillation are felt in this region, and these processes would most likely enhance the effects of sea level rise, including increased storminess, flooding, and erosion. This project explores one and two feet of sea level rise as the most likely scenarios to happen, and five feet of sea level rise as an extreme. It also estimates the number of people that would be displaced, by each scenario and the number of people that would be impacted in terms of health, particularly in terms of healthcare, that would be impacted by each scenario. I used data um, from NOAA Sea Level Rise and I used their mapping confidence raster and I used NASA's gridded world population raster, the Health Resources and Services Administration's health professional shortage areas, and the medically underserved areas data sets the Bureau of Indian Affairs federally recognized reservations and entities data set, and no sea level rise social vulnerability index by census tract data set. Throughout this project, I use ArdMap 10.5.1 to conduct a spatial analysis, primarily using zonal statistics. The first set of results that we see is an estimate of the number of people displaced by census tract. Um, on these maps, the gray areas that you see are census tracts where no one was displaced. And the pink and red areas are where we see displacement in census tracts, with pink being areas where there's less displacement and red being areas where there is more displacement. The dark blue color along the coast that you see is the sea level rise, and the light blue color is the sea level rise or the inundation that happens on land within the census tracts. For one foot of sea level rise, we see over 200,000 people being displaced. For 200 or for two feet of sea level rise, we see 2,000. 225,000 people being displaced, and for five feet of sea level rise, we see over 300,000 people being displaced. Next, we have an estimate of the number of Native Americans on reservations or entities that would be displaced. Um, for one foot of sea level rise, we see almost 2,200 people being displaced. For two feet, we see almost 3,800 people and for five feet, we see almost 6,000 6, people being displaced due to sea level rise. Again, those numbers of people being impacted or displaced are listed here. And in the corner, we have a table that has the percentage of each population type that in the counties affected that will be displaced by sea level rise. So as you can see from this table for two and five feet of sea level rise, Native American populations are more likely to be affected by sea level rise, but for one foot, the general population is overall more affected by sea level rise. The next set of results that we have is inundated and medically underserved areas. The red on the maps represent medically underserved areas that are in, in, that are in inundated areas. For one foot of sea level rise, we see 226 square miles that are in such an area that is medically underserved and inundated, and about 60,000 people reside in these areas and will be impacted. For two feet of sea level rise, we see 253 square miles that are in medically underserved areas and will be inundated by two feet of sea level rise. About 65,000 people live in these areas. And for five feet of sea level rise, we see 327 square miles that are in medically underserved areas and will also see inundation with over 100,000 people residing in these areas. Next, we see inundated areas that lack primary care professionals. Um, for, on these maps, the red areas again represent areas that will be inundated and also lack that primary care professionals. And so for one foot of sea level rise, we see 412 miles that lack primary care professionals and will be inundated by one foot of sea level rise with 136,000 people being impacted in such a way. With two feet of sea level rise, we see 460 square miles that lack primary care professionals and will be inundated by two feet of sea level rise with 156,000 people in these areas. And then for five feet of sea level rise, we see 583 square miles 
uh, like primary care professionals and will experience inundation with 240,000 people in these areas. And the last set of results that we have is inundated areas that lack mental health professionals. These pink areas are the areas that lack mental health professionals and will see inundation. For one foot of sea level rise, 468 square miles lack mental health professionals and will be inundated with 178,000 people in these areas. For two feet of sea level rise, it is 519 square miles that lack mental health professionals and will see inundation with almost 199,000 people in these areas. And for five feet of sea level rise, 651 square miles lag mental health professionals and will be inundated by five feet of sea level rise with 285,000 people in these areas. So just to summarize our results, over 200,000 people are estimated to be displaced by one foot of sea level rise, over 220,000 by two feet, and over 300,000 by five feet of sea level rise. Approximately 2,100 people who live on reservations or entities will be displaced by one foot of sea, sea level rise. Um, 3,700 people will be displaced by two feet and about 6,000 people will be displaced by five feet. Almost 45% of inundated areas across all sea level rise scenarios are in medically underserved areas. About 81% of inundated areas for all sea level rise scenarios lack primary care professionals, and approximately 91% of inundated areas um, lack mental health care professionals across all sea level rise scenarios. Now to discuss the results. So these estimates can be used to make proper preparations for funding and aid. That way these, um, that way funding and aid is available and made in advance of these sea level rise events. These identified areas can be targeted for funding and better health care and the introduction of more health professionals as well be targeted for um, funding for better infrastructure. And this good health care is a necessity because many health issues arise due to inundation including anxiety, PTSD, depression, gastrointestinal illness, respiratory illnesses, waterborne illnesses, and many other issues. So in conclusion, the estimates of how many people and where they live can help communities and separate levels of government to prepare for sea level rise scenarios. Using the data, census tracts, and reservation slash entities are, that are in the most danger can be identified and aided beforehand or after sea level rise events. The damage and problems that will arise can be eliminated or at least lessened before they occur if action is taken now using this data. Cities, towns, reservations, entities, and other areas can increase and better their infrastructure, raise the quality of their healthcare, or they can also abandon an area and re relocate if need be. And these are the references for the data sets that I used. Thank you, that is all.